ค่ะค่ะกลับสวัสดีทุกๆท,ท่านนะคะ uh, Good morning everyone and welcome back to our plenary sessions again um, At this time we are going to have a panel discussion on the topic of outlook on BCG and carbon credit impact to the industry and economy And for this session we I uh, have the honor of Dr. Bancha Chunha Swadikun, the president of Rubber and Elastomer Technology Association, to be a moderator for this session. And we have uh, four panelists for this session. Uh, Mr. May I invite uh, Kun Panitan Chunha Swadikun from Inno Innovation Groups as the first yeah, panelist. And then the Second speaker is Dr. Sawanit Bunya Suwat. Please come on stage. And the next panelist is Professor Dr. Hathaykan Manatpiya. And the last one, Dr. Kun Vibun Pung Prasad. So uh, may I invite. Uh, everyone on stage, and may I invite. Uh, Dr. Wancha to uh, begin moderating this session. Good morning, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Um, in the in this section, we're going to talk in English, as I understand it's an international conference. So I invite quite a few friends from Japan, and I also have. My students from Dragon University, uh, they are coming in. They are, they are international students. So I may I ask, in this conference, Abrita, we are going to give a presentation in English. Okay, hope you won't mind. Okay, uh, I would like to say good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I, it is our great pleasure and honor to welcome all of you to MSAC 12 and ICT 2024, which organization, which organized by International Metal and Material Center or MTEC and co organized by Labor Elastomer Technology Association or uh, RITA. Uh, nowadays, the world is facing significant environmental challenges on climate change. Thailand have experienced on the severe disaster in the north part of the country. In months ago, heavy flood and landslide at Chiang Mai and Chiang Rai. Cause of this disaster, I believe is costly because of us. The human being, we continue to damage the nature. Globally, countries are moved towards to country, social, and industrial sustainable. The concept of BCG economy and the circular economy, which working towards to the green economy, play crucial roles to achieve the net zero. The concept of BCG economies uh, by using the bio-based material and reuse of the resource to ensure efficiency of utilization of material and using green polymers or natural materials to replace material from petroleum based. Additionally, the implementation of carbon credit is coming more and more common practice. MTEC and LITA really like the importance of the new economic uh, prospect that arise with the needs of environmental Conscious in sustainable material initiative aiming to achieve the net zero. We jointly arranged this technical seminar 
we invite experienced researchers and experienced technologists from the industry to share knowledge, technology, and experience in this conference. I would like to say thank you to all of our speakers of today's seminar, and especially we have our foreign uh, guest speakers from Japan, Dr. Uh, Jinichi Kawahara from the Society of Rubber Science and Technology Japan, uh, Dr. Yoshi Masa Yamamoto from Natural Institute of Technology Tokyo College for the effort and coming to join our conference. Uh, and I would also thank you to Mr. Nayo Ichikawa from Sumi Rubber Thai Eastern Corporation. And I have, um, this morning, I um, was very happy to meet my friend, Dr. Muntam uh, Diti Uthai, the founder of Patani Campus, the Prince of Ka, Nakarin. He's very kind to come and talk about his uh, development in, on the uh, bed saw bed. I think it's very useful for the country. I believe this today's technical seminar will be useful and benefit to our audience and in the continue of their research and achieve the goal of green technology. Thank you very much. Okay, let me move to join the group over here. Uh, wow, we have all the experienced persons in this BCG and circular economy, especially two beautiful ladies sitting over here. <laughs> Dr. Ataika, she is very nice and very active uh, ladies. Okay, uh, Dr. Hathai Khan, she is the uh, director from Pitomat Chuang Khan University. She is very active to link the research fund, okay, and to the researchers. And she also has her roles in the Pitomat, okay. Uh, next, the second person, nice lady, is Dr. Saunit Munya uh, Suwat. Uh, the vice chairman of sustainable strategy management of PTTGC. She also in the position of the FTI as a chairman of BCG models uh, committee of FTI. Okay, she will share her experience in working with PTTGC as well as with the FTI. And the other person I would like to, he's, he's my very uh, friend for a long time, uh, Kun Vipun. Okay, Pung Pasert. Uh, Kun Vipun nowadays is the Honorable President of Bioplastic Association. Uh, he also in the high position in the PTT uh, CG. He will, he will uh, share with us the experience in developing bioplastics in Thailand. And the last person, okay, Kun Pranitan Chunha Asawari Kun, the president of Innovation Group. Okay, four of, of these uh, two experienced persons, they were going to share with us their experience and uh, their works and what's going on and the path forward for the BCG and circular economy for the country. Okay. Uh, the first person I would like to ask, who, who else would you do? Uh, Dr. Hathai Khan, I would like to start with her, the beautiful ladies, okay? Uh, Dr. Hathai Khan, uh, she's very active to link the natural uh, data research fund for the country into the private sector, to the uh, academics, uh, researchers. Uh, and also she's working as the director in Petromat. So I leave this one to Dr. Haithakan. 
she she will go to us tell us what her works and roles, what she's doing. Okay. In okay. the BCG and Sukra economies. Thank yeah. you very much, yeah. Thank you, Dr. Van Shaka, for a very nice introduction. And maybe I start with my presentation because okay. of, I think that the time is shortened now. And ask me to uh, stand up because I please, cannot see the, <laughs> the slide. Okay. Uh, not, not this one. Maybe this one I will talk later. Maybe the Lita, Lita 2. Yeah, my, my name is Professor Hatekai Manazia. I'm the uh, faculty of uh, petroleum and petrochemical uh, Chulangkorn University. And now I serve as the director of Center of Excellence on Petrochemical and Material Technology that under the Ministry of uh, Science, Innovation and Higher Education. And uh, so for the, our center, uh, the short name is the Petromat. Uh, Petromat is like the, a consortium of the researcher in the material that we work working together and we want to bring our research into the commercialization. So the Petromat, we work at, at the breeding to, to link between the uh, industry and the ac ac academic sector. So uh, we have the member from the 11 Institute across seven universities uh, throughout the uh, Thailand region. And we have the Cholongkorn University, the Sesat University, Sinpakorn University, uh, University Technology of Sulanali, Walailak, uh, Bulapa, and uh, Thamasa. So we we're working together and maybe more than uh, 300 researchers under uh, Petromat. We work on the, our uh, research uh, expertise. We divide into a uh, four research pro uh, program. So we uh, start from the uh, petroleum bed and then go through the uh, petrochemical uh, process. After that, from this uh, petrochemical uh, process and the production, you can uh, uh, produce the high performance and smart material. So we have the uh, petrochemical, we have the energy, we have the uh, high performance smart material. And now you all know that we are keen on the, on the uh, bio based on the bio material, bio refinery. So we now have the lighter uh, material for future energy and clean petrochemical uh, industry. So we divide our uh, researcher into the uh, uh, four research program. And uh, the co collaboration benefit to work with Petromat, you can, for the company, you can ask for the uh, fast track R&D uh, return tax. Uh, we have the research solution uh, technique time for training, we have uh, provide community and then collaboration for the proposed research fund. As Dr. Bansha mentioned that we going to try to get the uh, funding for both uh, industry and academic sector from the uh, government too. And we have uh, many equipment and laboratory throughout our member and many uh, network include uh, internal and uh, external. We have uh, many uh, MOU with the international level as well. So from the training, we have uh, many training based on, uh, sometimes the, the training is based on the, the knowledge about uh, petrochemical and material. However, now today we have uh, em emphasized on the training on the uh, net zero and the carbon footprint. So you, you're going to see it later. So now we have many uh, training and seminar that uh, rely on the BCG and the carbon credit impact, including the circular economy. For example, circular economy in the plastic industry, circular economy in the rubber industry that we already organized last year with the data maybe, yeah. <laughs> and we have many uh, invite the professional on the carbon credit assessment. Try, uh, try to distribute the knowledge to a researcher, to the student, and maybe to the uh, a public too. And uh, now we have the one important project that uh, received the funding from the National Research Council of Thailand to uh, exhibit the hub of talent on sustainable material for circular economy. And this hub of talent, we aim to gather uh, as much as uh, possible, the 
who interested to work with the any sustainable material. So not only the academic session, but we aim to get the collaboration from the industry, from the government uh, sector too. So we can bring uh, this interest together. And we divide the strategy into five strategies. First, uh, working on the recovery material, manufacturing efficiency, dematerialization, lifetime extension, and substitution. So uh, all of the research project of the uh, Pitomat now is based on these five strategies. So we have the many researchers that uh, we can uh, put into each uh, category. And this one, you can follow us on the uh, website. We attribute the website for the uh, hub of the sustainmat.org. So you can uh, follow our activity. And if you are interested to join this hub of talent, so please uh, register through the, uh, this QR code later. And uh, so the hub of talent, we already uh, uh, go to the uh, second year of the of the uh, of the funding now, and this year we aim to uh, develop uh, a couple of the champion product, and we aim to convert the bio biomass or maybe the agricultural waste into the high value added product. For example, we have the one project that we maybe uh, collaborate with the Enserve uh, company that they have the. Uh, a plan, a plan of farming of the a super super sorghum, and from this one, from the super sorghum, you will have the uh, grain, you will have the uh, sap, uh, it's like the uh, sorghum juice and the bagasse. From uh, this uh, product, you can develop into uh, other uh, high value added material. For example, you can uh, develop biodegradable materials, or maybe you can extract the lignin and use at the uh, binder for the battery, or maybe develop at the thickening agent for battery and food, hard carbon, electrolyte, and maybe other biomedical uh, material. From the juice or the sorghum juice, maybe you can develop into a bacterial cellulose. You can develop at the uh, raw, mat raw material for biojet, uh, rare sugar, or maybe you can develop at the monomer for the bioplastic, for example, by OPP or by OPE. So this is under the research. And from the clan as well, you can develop maybe antioxidant additive, biodegradable and bio medical material. So this is the project under the uh, second year of the hub, hub of talent. We also have the other project that we aim to develop the talent for Thailand uh, economy too. Because uh, we have the uh, project named BCG Industrial a postdoc. This one we received the uh, grant funding from the uh, PMUB or the Brain Power uh, Research Unit. And this one we developed the new kind of the postdoc that the postdoc had to work full time with the industry. And the, uh, the research project is under uh, mentoring by the from the ac academy, uh, from the uh, faculty. And they're going to have the mentor from uh, industry too. In uh, within the one year, this postdoc has to work uh, full time in the uh, industry, and not not only the hard skill that they have to uh, finish their own research project, but we're going to uh, try to improve their uh, soft skill too in in many uh, aspects. So that that means we're going to have the uh, high uh, talented. Uh, person that ready to work with the industry. So by this uh, platform, we aim to, uh, it's like the up level of the uh, Thailand re research uh, scheme. Uh, however, from this one, we aim to uh, help create the career path for this postdoc. So that means the postdoc, they don't have to work with, with the academy uh, anymore. So now they are ready to work with the industry. So from this platform, we already have the uh, a funding. Maybe now it's the already go to the a fifth, fifth year already. It's like the Helix program that you work together with the uh, industry, academy, and uh, Petromat. Okay. So we have uh, 
and the the output from this one you not need to to publish paper the the output from this uh, project you can uh, you can provide like the a prototype the developed process or maybe the the pattern so it it will bring the new new aspect of the a uh, uh, postdoc uh, position so up uh, uh, this one so all the company that join with this program now they have like uh, many uh, prototype they have the pattern that uh, some of them already uh, run in the uh, commercial in the market already so now we go to uh, we have more and more company to join uh, our project so like uh, last year we have a 40 collaboration project okay from uh, 23 private sector and they uh, this company they put the in kind and in cash uh, support from uh, for this project too uh, so this is the example i still have another a lot of the example maybe a second round right <laughs> thank you <laughs> dr Thayka, you you have many many projects and I, what what i really write is your postdoc program okay innovation group we have joined this postdoc program we have we have the student already graduate on the postdoc or your postdoc program very useful and i saw you have many many projects going on uh, can you give the very good example which of this project have been being commercialized and becoming in the market uh commercialized in the market uh okay maybe i i have one from the the shura shura that developed the new kind of the uh, roof uh, material new kind of the cement and now uh they uh, shura joined this program for uh two years okay and they already launched the product another one is from the company named uh, a cyber company uh, maybe i'm not sure that you know the cyber but they use the the fiber from from the a garment it's like you wear you're wearing a jean and a lot of the jean and then what left off uh they have like a, a ton of this garment so the the cyber they develop the they spin the fiber from this web and then they use the designer and with the, our uh, researcher to produce uh, many construction it's like the, a decorative uh, panel uh the toothbrush and what else M many products that they already uh, maybe uh, win the award price and they already launched the market especially in the uh in the european country too because uh, now they are really uh, so loved in this kind of the uh like the biodegradable product or the uh eco product something like this so not only two, I think more than 10 that uh, they already launched in Thank commercial. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Dr. Haith Haikan, uh, my last question. You're working for uh, industries and the uh, economics. You're working with the natural research funds, get into the uh, research of many projects. What's really you, you face for the problem of struggles in linking and develop all this project. Uh, I like to hear uh, what is the problem, what is the obstacles in develop all these projects. Share with us. I like you share with us. Uh, maybe the first one. I think the the industrial uh, sector. Maybe they still have not not the not the good understanding of this kind of, of the research project. They don't know how the scholarship, uh, they don't know how to, to write a good proposal to get the, to grab the grant. And we have to match the right person with the right company. So if, if you get the, the good team and then you know the objective from the uh, a grant uh, agency, from the uh, uh, government, I think you, you can get the grant easily. And uh, sometimes when you work with the, with the industry and you have to work with the government too, it's quite, uh, how to say, it? uh, it's quite a different, different culture of working. 
So you, you have to know how to match these two groups to work together and get the goal. And then after you get the uh, a funding, how you can uh, manage the, the time, how you can manage the budget to finish the project within, within the, the time frame. Okay, I, I think uh, the obstacle is how, how you can work with these this two together and then get the uh, a final goal successfully. <laughs> Any question for the floor? For Dr. Hathai Khan. Or not? Thank you very much, Dr. Hai Thai Khan, <laughs> to share your Thank experience you. to us. Uh, the second nice lady over here, Dr. Saunit Munya Swat. Uh, she is holding a very strategic position in PTT GC, the chair, vice chairman of sustainable strategy management of PTT GC. Okay, and I, I, I it's really a key strategic position to build the new S curve of the company. I believe that, and also she's in the position of uh, FTI as a chairman of BCG model uh, committee of FTI. I like her to share her experience and the concept of BCG uh, and uh, in this for for the floor. Thank you very much, please. Thank you very much, um, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Ajahn Bancha, for inviting the federations of Thai industry to be here. Allow me to standing up. And because we don't have the presentations up here. Okay, um, allow me to introduce myself again. I'm um, Sawanit Bunya Sawat from the Federation of Thai Industry. Today, we have the executive from the Federation of Thai Industry as well, Swadina. Okay, on behalf of the Federation of Thai Industry on the private sector side, we would like to share knowledge or um, the activity that we're working on the BCG economy. Most of us, majority is Thai, known that the uh, bio-circular and green is a national strategy, but except the um, people from, from the other countries like Japanese, we have the bio-circular green economy for the national um, strategy that's because this is the context of Thailand because bioeconomy is um, aligned with the, we have the agricultural sector, how do we create the value on that? And the circular economy will be the main function or strategy that we working on the industry. And both of the bio and circular in the private sector side, if we can measure it, that how far we go or how do we benchmarking or quantifiable um, the value, that's gonna say that how do we, how much do we contribute to GDP? That's called the green economy. So the bio circular and green in the context of Thailand and in the perspective of the private sector side is meaning that. I'm gonna cover um, four of the um, agenda. The first was the importance and the impact and the in action in summary for the Federation of Thai Industry. Starting with the impact, um, sorry, important. Um, as you know that we have the uh, sustainable development goals from the United Nations that we have the um, 17 of goals. We, this morning, uh, we heard about the city goals. I think it's on the 11, the city, um, sustainable city or low carbon city that we're talking about. And um, how do we working together on the partnership and for industry in the Federation of Thai Industry. We cover many goals, but um, specific now is the climate action that we have the climate agenda or the goal 13. The, the second one is the investor, investor expectations on the ESG or environmental, social and governance. I think everybody knows about that. They expect that you have to, um, making the business have to be aligned with the environmental and social and governance as well. And the last one that I already covered is the BCC or in the context of Thailand, we have our own um, strategy on the sustainability agenda in Thailand called BCT. This is the picture of BCT and this, this is a picture of our countries. The bio is mainly adding the value or create the value for biomaterial or agricultural sector. The second thing is the platform or circular ecosystem that we have to work together in industry, partnership with the academic and um, um, academy and um, government agency. And last but not least, we're making the low carbon economy a low carbon society. 
that we have to measure everything. Quantifiable cap uh, will be very important that we can measure and we can develop. So we call the green economy. The second agenda will be the impact. Okay, I'm gonna start with the global leaks in, in the countries, the very big picture, that's why why industry have to be developed and industry have to be adapt or transform our business to be clean or better green of that. Um, starting with the World Economic Forum, they discuss about the top 10 rigs. You will see here in the, um, the red, red box, there are all um, environmental rigs, the extreme weather that we will just face it. And critical um, earth system, the biodiversity loss, and the last one, the natural resources shortage. This is a very important, that's why the economy industry have to be adapted. And this is the very um, high extreme weather. We are now flooding in the northern part of Thailand. And I believe that many countries in the Arsene country face on the, this disaster as well. This is the climate consequence. Um, the trends of the ESG or sustainability will be, the, um, actually there are many of them, but um, related to the industry and, and I'm grouping for majority. The first one is the strengthens of environmental restriction, regulation for net zero product. Um, consumer will be willing to pay the ESG product or BCG product. You have the premium on that. I'm um, talk about the private sector side because um, we are talking about the value of the money. We're talking about market and the um, academic joint venture to making the innovative product will be in the future, but have to be concerns about ESG as well. And the um, extreme weather, climate breaks, and many tightening environmental strains and now. And they're talking about not just the environmental, but you have to concern about supply chain because the supply of footprint will be very, very important. Ecosystem of the um, environmental, you have to link between the um, supplier, feedstock, and everything to make it um, sustainable happen. And the last but not least, when you're doing everything, you have to be this close in the um, corporate governance way. Otherwise, um, they want you to avoid the greenwashing. So people can say that desktop analysis, you will be net zero corporate, but the implementation phase is very, very important. You have to have the activity. You have to concern about the supplier, supply chain as a whole system. That's why they have, they say that integrity and disclosure avoid the greenwashing is very important. There are all three of the um, ESG trends that are very important and um, um, analyzed from the big four of names of the consultant and very big name of the um, um, institution. Yes, we just have the UN General Assembly already for 2024. They're talking about so many kinds of this that I already mentioned, like the climate network, the food system, the forward faster and everything. And next month, we're gonna have the conference of the party under UNFCCC or in COP29 that we will discuss about the climate agenda. There are all of the um, private sector, many private sector or government agencies will be there and discuss about the, the main thing that we're talking about, carbon or climate come with the course. So you have to have the financing. Catalytic financing will be very important at the issue of COP29 for next month. And go deep down to Thailand. We are not the pollution emitter, the big one. We are number nine. Oh, sorry. We are number about 19, but we um, um, impact from the global climate breaks in top 10 in the country in the world. So that's why we have to adapt. We have to transform ourselves in our country. And if we have the innovation solution, we can join hand together in the future. Maybe um, people from innovation part from the Japanese or the other country. I think we open for innovation and collaboration in the future to cope with this situation. In Thailand, we already, already have the net zero part way. We have the carbon neutrality pledge in 2050 and net zero pledge on, in 2065. In the future, we have to have the NDC second and third that will be strengthened and strengthened. This is our new prime minister. A young lady already mentions about the um, top 10 um, urgent policy, many kind of things, but patched with the um, bio, circular, and green national economy that I already mentioned earlier. That's way. Um, inaction. 
This is the picture of our chairman at the Federation of Thai Industry. Um, someone please take a photo because I'm on behalf of him today. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Kun Kren Gai already um, set up the, um, the strategy for his second term. The one thing that he called is the strategy called the one FTI, the very important one FTI mean we include everything, including that SME, micro SME, very important for our ecosystem. Not just nobody can cope or nobody can um, tackle the solution or no, nobody can tackle the climate alone. You have to have the ecosystem. Um, small SME, micro SME are very important. So one strategy, one FTI is his um, vision and mission here. I'm not going to deep down to all of this, but BCG is already in here and many kind of a um, strategy on the BCG is already included and embedded in the, in the industry that we're working together. Sorry. Okay. Um, the Federation of Thai Industry Role and Responsibility, we have the first industry, I mean the old industry. The next gen industry will be the S-curve industry bio circular and green and climate change that have to be transformed. And the rest is a picture of the first S curve and new S curve for you to, to um, give a picture for you. And the BCG economy that I already mentioned that it's the context of Thailand which aligned to the sustainable development goals of the United Nations already, the bio circular and green. Um, the bio economy, uh, Ajahn Hatai can already cover so many of the projects, but in the, Thai, uh, the Federation FTI, uh, the Federation of Thai Industry, this is the example. We have tremendous of them, but this is the example. The biocosmetic, no food, medical medicine, bioplastic, biofuel, many of kind of this, this is the creative value for our agricultural sector. The second one is the circular economy that we have to concern about. Well, three R, five R, or seven R depend on the corporate vision. But the we have the circular material hub that um, can be the waste in biosis for the other industry as well. We we can cross collaborations from one industry to the other industry, and we have the um, directory which plug into the um, Federation of Thai Industry website already, and we're working together waste generator. And we join hand together with the international organization like Alliance to End Plastic Waste that concern about the um, how do we um, making the project implementation that trying to reduce the, um, for example, the plastic waste management. And this is the plastic road that made from the SDG and the mega city project in Rayong that will be, a, this is the role model for making the bio, um, plastic waste management happen. And we have the word that upcycling, not just the recycle, but we add the value for that. And this is, I think people in Thailand already know about this is the upcycling project. We have the Green Buster. This is a, one of the very famous guy wearing the upcycling or this is the Green Buster and help people to add awareness, making the awareness happen. This is the circular economy at PG, um, the federations of Thai industry. And this is the Thailand climate landscape on the green economy. I'm going to give you the big picture of what's happened in our countries. The first one is the directive from many countries, especially European Union. We have the carbon border adjustment mechanism or CBAM that you already know that the EU taxonomy for climate finance you have the EU deforestation regulation, which postponed but will be the mandatory in the future in, in a year. And there are so many of them happen. UK is already um, off from the EU, but already have the UK CBAM. This is a very tightening directive for us, for um, export sector. The second thing is the act in Thailand. Now we're working on the second, um, the acts of Climate Change Act, but not launched yet. We're waiting for a sending to the cabinet and launch from the cabinet. Hopefully, it will be this year. And the measure, there is a main measure of the climate. The first one is the taxation measure or carbon tax. The second one is the investment promotion from the um, Board of Investment of Thailand. And the monetary policy, I already say that carbon or climate, it can be core. So we have to have the 
um, subsidy or supporting from the financing, catalytic financing will be very important. The third one is a guideline for you to making the things happen. Implementation phase or investment in the environmental is very huge. I mean, capital, huge capital. So we have to align with the Thailand taxonomy for climate finance. Now we're working on the baseline for our country, not um, same um, rule with the EU, but we have to have the context of Thailand as well. And yes, we have to disclose everything aligned with the EU directive as well. And the last but not least, carbon market is very important. Otherwise, you cannot pay the, um, um, the cost of the carbon at the border of the EU. And the verifier still, number of verifiers still um, less. We have to um, scale up. And the climate advocacy, I think this is a collaboration with the Ministry of Education and um, Science and Education to making the um, one-stop service. Uh, we know that we request or support from the um, grants or um, innovations on grant or, or innovation to R&D. We have to write down everything, but it's not easy for us. I mean, private sector, we need to have the one-stop service from the Mahesi, I mean, the Minister of Education, Higher Education. And like Atan Hataigan already mentioned, the future skill, skill set will be very important in, in the future, not just the science base. We have to mix between art and science and everything because this is the one of the new skill set. We have the mix between the environmental. Now the uh, international organization like World Bank or ADB needs people knowing about the environmental and economies making together. Earlier, the BMA already mentioned about the um, political science and environmental. I think environmental and economies are very important as well. This is a new career and new career development. Again, this is the... Um, key success factor that we have to have the um, vision and mission aiming the BCT technologies, the, the supply chain is very important and the renewable energy and upskill and reskill and last but not least the law must be um, supporting or ease of doing business in Thailand. Um, this is very, we are very proud that we're making on the SDT index, we are number one in the ASEAN and in the Dow Jones Sustainability Index we are number one in the ASEAN as well. We have the about 28 organizations already listed in the um, Dow Jones Index. And this is the example of we making the um, standard dice of the plastic um, bottle to be the clear plastic bottle because it can be recycled and it can be upcycling. And this is one of the ecosystem and one of the initiative of the Federation of Thai Industry making for our countries. This is one of the very um, good projects for public goods like in Thailand. And I'm here with the um, a young lady, Green Ambassador. If you're in Thailand, you will know her. Okay, all right. In summary, the BCT strategy will be turning the challenges into the opportunity. We're not talking about a directive, but we have seen the opportunity in the risks the second one is the product, BCG product will be, consumer will be willing to pay. So it's really going to be the game changer in the future. And we can minimize the impact from directive law and everything. And last but not least, we need to forward faster and collaboration to now um, government agency like the Mahesi or people or organization from international body, the Federation of Thai Industry willing to making things happen and collaboration with you guys in the future because we have to act now. We have just one planet. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Saunit. I think he gave us a very clear picture how the BCG model going to develop, especially she tried to implement not only the PTTGC, she tried to implement the whole uh, cost the board of FTI. Uh, I have been working with FTI for quite many, many years. Uh, what I'm facing in uh, a new S-curve and new model in FTI, uh, I myself, I have the feeling that 
uh, most of this new model will happen in the big organization. Okay, uh, like the uh, BTT, GC, SCG, and all this one. Uh, in the in FTI, most of the member are come from a medium size, small size. You know, to uh, get drop on the new model, uh, always you need extra people in the organization and devote to the new model, because actually um, most of the uh, most of the members in the FTI they are very busy because of the business marketing and all this what especially at this moment the economics and I think the market is slowing down and everybody is struggling on the competitions and all this what I believe uh, PTT, CG also struggling with the competition of petrochemicals products from China, from Middle East. So, you know, in India, all this across the board, I think most it will happen in uh, the big company. Have you any problem to get across the board, Europe, on the BCG model in FTI? Dr. Sorry, chapters. Thank you very much. This is a very good question. So the very big challenge is the going um, work, work together on the biocircular green or the green economy will transform everything. In the Federation of Thai Industry, we have the project called the, in Thai we call um Kongkan Pichoy Nong, but um, in, in book, maybe the big brother, the big organization, the corporate will have to um, making the educate um educate the people in the in the supply chains to working together on the ESG. Otherwise, if you know anything about the climate um categorized, they have the three category. The scope one is yourself. How do we um have the efficiency of the energy, something like that. The second one is the utilization of facilities like um steam or the electricity you have to concern about it scope two and scope three is the about the feedstock and um out of the border of your co company so there are all scope three of your net zero if you have the pledge the net zero you have to concern about the supply chain and supply chain footprint will be your footprint in the future so people in scg ptt cp there are very big corporate there are have the scope trees same supplier. So we have to working together and educate and working together. This is a very important and it's a very big challenge in the Federation. Very challenging. Industry. Very challenging. Uh, uh, actually, uh, it's very interesting about what you have described to us, how you drop with all across the board in FGI members. Okay. Uh, I hope this will be very successful. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Saunit. Any questions for the floor to her? Okay, if there is no question for Dr. Saunit, I would like to move to Kunwipun. Okay, I, I have been knowing Kunwipun for quite a while. Uh, he, he, he was the uh, president of Bioplastic Association in Thailand, and now he is the uh, honorable chairpersons of the uh, Bioplastic uh, Association in Thailand. And, you know, we have been, I have been working with uh, this Bioplastic. I have been get involved with the Bioplastic uh, for quite a while since uh, Dr. Wantani in uh, NIA. Uh, Bioplastic have been introduced in Thailand and you know, uh, nowadays I still see uh, it's not really uh, uh, being really utilized and uh, expand the market into many areas. I still have uh, quite a limit of market and uh, prospect. I would like to leave it to Kun Wun to tell us how the bioplastics are doing in Thailand and what is the prospect of bioplastics in this country. Okay, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Mtech and uh, Rita, to give the opportunity for us to have a presentation on the bioplastic. Uh, my name is Vipu, and I'm an honorable president. 
of the Type of Plastic Industry Association. Uh, call short is uh, TBIA. Okay. Uh, I used to be the president for two years, and then the, uh, the term is end. So the new president is in are uh, already effective. So, <clears throat> but today, or because we talk about the BCG, so uh, today I will talk about the BCG policy, especially for Thailand. Or uh, what is the bioeconomy effect on the bioplastic in Thailand in terms of the demand and the supply uh, of bioplastic, and um, also the government policy uh, related to the bioplastic in this country. So uh, I give a short introduction on the TBIA. Uh, TBIA is um, founded uh, 17 years ago. Uh, currently, only 10 companies will be a member. Now uh, we have uh, 60 companies. So the, the company uh, TBIA is growing. So any any company interested to join the association, uh, you can tell me, and uh, we give you an application. To that. So the um, the association want to make Thailand to be the leading in bioplastic. Okay, but um, uh, we can say in terms of the supply, or uh, we can say Thailand is the the number one or number two in the bioplastic production. We can say that, but uh, in terms of the demand, we can say our uh, the usage of the bioplastic in this country is still low. Yes, I tell you later. Our, the association have a lot of uh, members. We cross the supply chain of the bioplastic because the bioplastic use the sugar or raw material from plant to make uh, bioplastic. So we have uh, the feedstock like uh, sugar meal as uh, our member. And we have uh, the resin producer like uh, PTTGC, NatureWorks, or PTMCC. Okay. And uh, we also have the converter who use the resin to produce the products. Our, the, our activity to raise the bioawareness in the country, we talk with the government, we talk with uh, uh, the, in the uh, university and uh, some institution to uh, get the research fund and uh, to promote the bioplastic, especially the government policy. So the BCG model, I think we already know that Thailand has the uh, BCG uh, policy. One of them is the bioeconomy. So <clears throat> the bioeconomy is to make uh, Thailand uh, as an agricultural country to use our raw material like uh, uh, sugar. Uh, if we sell the sugar to the to the other country or export it or sell it at a uh, sugar uh, as a commodity, we are uh, sell it in only uh, 10, 10 bars per kilo. But if we can increase that uh, sugar to have a value added to be the bioplastic, the, the cost and the price of sugar are, can increase 10 times to at least 100, 100 baht per kilo. So that's, uh, that's why the Thai government want to or uh, increase the value of the, our uh, agricultural products. So <clears throat> the bioplastic also is uh, in the BCG because the, we use the raw material like bio. So it's a green initiative and uh, <clears throat> it's a circular as well. So the bioplastic can, can uh, move uh, when after you use that, you can compose it and uh, uh, back to the uh, environment. So uh, one, one of the biggest uh, uh, bio refinery in Thailand is in uh, Nakhon Sawan. So uh, the NatureWorks, one of the uh, biggest producer of the bioplastic PLA, uh, start investing in this uh, refinery. So uh, as, as I say, uh, Thailand is the number one or number two in uh, bioplastic uh, producer. I tell you um, <clears throat> each one of these. So uh, one is a trotocopian. They start producing PLA in Rayong uh, a few years ago. Uh, the capacity is 75,000 metric tons. Uh, this is the second largest PLA 
producer in the world. And we have a PTT MCC, our joint venture between PTT GC and uh, uh, Mitsubishi Chemical, produced the uh, bio PBS for 20,000 metric ton in Rayong as well. So we have a nature work that uh, uh, building the plant in Thailand at the Konsuman refinery. So the, uh, the capacity is 75,000 metric ton. That's the second plant of the nature works. The first plant is in US. Uh, capacity 150,000 metric tons in uh, uh, Nebraska, USA. This is the second one. And also, uh, if you know the, about the news, SEG are uh, joint venture with the Baskin. Baskin is the largest uh, producer of the BioPE, and the plant is in Brazil. And they uh, start uh, considering the investment uh, for the second plant in Thailand, in Rayong. Uh, this is the largest our BOP plan in the world at 100,000 metric tons. Uh, they, I think they uh, start uh, studying and do engineering right now. And also we have uh, some of the uh, bioplastic producer who use the uh, <clears throat> starch to produce the bioplastic like thermoplastic starch. Uh, we have our other member like uh, Taiwan or SMS Xiang modified starch to use uh, the tapioca starch to make a uh, bioplastic resin as well. So if you look at the uh, government policy, our uh, Thailand is our uh, fifty percent of the waste in Thailand is the uh, food waste, and right now there is no uh, system to our uh, effective uh, collect and uh, get rid or the dispose the food waste efficiently. So if we use uh, any uh, packaging that re difficult to recycle because of uh, contaminated with the food, food waste, so we can use that, uh, change it to bioplastic, or it can, be, or it can help uh, the environment by, uh, rather than uh, put it in the landfill, we can use that compostable uh, packaging to compose it with the food waste, okay? So it can reduce the waste as well. So in Thailand, there is a policy to stop using seven uh, single-use plastic, but this policy is just policy, it's no, uh, no penalty. It's, it's not a regulation, it's a, a voluntary policy. So uh, they ask the, uh, the company to stop using it. If, uh, if the company don't stop, so there is nothing happen. Also the plastic bag, uh, they ask the supermarket to stop, uh, give away the plastic bag. And some, of, some supermarket uh, follow the policy, some not. So <clears throat> if you, if you, if you are going to the, uh, the supermarket in Thailand, some also uh, don't give you the uh, shopping bag. Okay, and some are uh, uh, give you uh, the, the the thick uh, shopping bag, so that's a follow the policy. They also have a twenty five percent tax reduction on the on the bioplastic usage, but uh, it look like it's a good policy. Actually, it's a good policy, but uh, 125 percent tax reduction may not be enough because the price of the bioplastic is higher two or three times comparing to the conventional plastic. So this policy needs to be our, our review and increase the, uh, the incentive, okay, to at least about 200 or 300% to make the bioplastic uh, competitive to the conventional plastic. Uh, I give you the example of the bioplastic usage in Thailand. In Chulalongkorn University, you use the uh, bio PBS coated cup, replacing the plastic cup or uh, in the canteen in the Chulalongkorn University. And the Cafe Maison is the largest coffee chain in Thailand. They use the bioplastic in the hot cup and also in the straw used all nationwide. And uh, internet used the uh, uh, a cold cup and a hot cup and also straw 
internet is the second largest uh, coffee chain in Thailand. And also there is uh, another uh, brand using uh, double plastic uh, all over the country. But comparing to the conventional plastic, the usage of the barrel plastic is only one or two percent. So there's uh, still room for the barrel plastic to use in this country. And um, if you look at that, most of them are single-use plastic. So uh, we are developing some application that uh, can uh, uh, the brand owner can be using more about barrel plastic. So I, I think uh, TBA work a lot with the uh, government agencies because we know that uh, without the uh, government regulation or government policy, our uh, plastic is difficult to expand. So we work a lot uh, with, the, with the government. We work with the Ministry of Industry, work with the Ministry of Science, and also uh, Ministry of Environment. Okay. And so we, we work with the uh, uh, Bangkok uh, governor also. Okay. All right. So if you want to contact TBIA, you can contact me via the email or, uh, <clears throat> or the number show on the screen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good be born. Actually, good be born. Um, I, I get to know and involved in the bioplastics for over 15 years. And bioplastic, the first uh, issues that bioplastic always lifts up is the cost. Okay. Actually, nowadays, uh, many bioplastics uh, materials coming in from China, many countries are producing. The, 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 the cost of, I don't think it's really a big issue. We're still struggling because uh, the industry is struggling on the cost. Okay? And when people are struggling on the cost, how to reduce the cost? Adding filler, adding all this cup, uh, um, material to reduce the cost. And once you add it in, uh, you come up with the solution of the cost. But um, many properties not really match what the requirement. And I, 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 I may I ask the president, uh, the uh, the honorable chairman of uh, bioplastic, what really? How can we drop the bioplastic in, in to keep a really successful cases and can see the market expand beside of the cost? Okay. If or uh, for bioplastic, if you look at the cost only. This cannot compare to the conventional plastic in uh, today or in the future. Uh, there is two reasons why it's, uh, the first one is uh, economic of scale because the largest the largest plant of the conventional plastic are maybe four million four million tons a year, like uh, ACG bill in Vietnam, four million. But uh, the largest uh, plan for the bioplastic in the world is uh, 150,000. So it's more than 30 times to our uh, comparing to the, uh, the largest plan. So for the economic upscale, they cannot compete. And the other one is the raw material because uh, conventional plastic use uh, oil and gas. Comparing to uh, uh, bioplastic use uh, sugar. So sugar always are more expensive than oil and gas. So uh, if you look at the cost, they cannot compete. So um, to expand the uh, bioplastic uh, in the market, I think there is uh, three, three roles of uh, uh, players that can uh, or increase the demand of the bioplastic. The first one is the government that I mentioned. Without the regulation or the strict uh, uh, <clears throat> mandate from the government, or the, the user or the brand owner still reluctant to change from the conventional plastic to bioplastic because of the price. Okay, they want 
uh, every time that I go out and talk to the brand owner about the very plastic, everyone say it's a good, uh, it's, it's a good, uh, good solution for the waste management. But uh, they always ask how much of that. So when I tell them the price is two or three times higher, they say, oh, leave it, <laughs> leave it, uh, leave it later. So we consider it uh, after this. So, uh, <clears throat> so, but uh, with, uh, with the government uh, regulation, there is no excuse. Everyone has to use it. I give you an example. In China, uh, before the regulation of the single-use plastic ban in our major city, uh, the usage of the bioplastic bag in China is only 2,000 metric tons a year. 2,000 metric tons a year. But um, <clears throat> last, last year, last year, uh, China, China government mandated every big supermarket in major city uh, stop using the, uh, the HDP shopping bag. They need to use the con composable bag. The, uh, the demand of the bioplastic bag from 2,000 metric ton increased to 200,000 metric ton, 100 times overnight. So, <laughs> so the first one is the uh, government regulation. So the second one is the brand owner. Because when I talk to the brand owner, everyone say bio plastic is good, but they don't use it because of the price. Uh, only few brand owners use it because the, they they talk, uh, they walk with their talk. They say they love, they love, the, they love this bird. They want to save the environment and they pay for it. But only few, right? Hundred hundred brand owner maybe use one or two. So uh, if the brand owner stop uh, looking at the bottom line only and looking at the uh, more environment friendly, so uh, start using the bioplastic that it can increase. The, the third one is the consumer. Because consumer can be the power or the voice to the brand owner. I talked to one of the uh, coffee shop in Thailand. They're using a uh, bioplastic for, for the, all of the branches. Uh, they use the uh, straw, they use the uh, uh, coffee cups, hot and cold and whatever. I, I asked the owner, why do you why they use it? Uh, uh, he said, uh, his, his customers are mostly the young people uh, in, in the, in the Tonglo area. Uh, they, start, they start asking about uh, the environment. They, they start asking him about why you still use the conventional plastic packaging. Uh, why you uh, don't change to something is better. So he, he, he listened to his customer and changed. So there's three things that's uh, really more important than the cost of the bio plastic. Okay, thank you very much. So actually we have to wait for the government decoration. <laughs> Okay, uh, uh, um, I may turn to the last person over here, Mr. Panditan Chunha Swatikun from the president of Innovation Group. Uh, Innovation Group is celebrating the 20th, uh, 40th <laughs> years anniversary. And, you know, uh, I, I would like to uh, put Panditan chairs. Uh, this happy journeys of innovation group and uh, I innovation group also set a new company called innovation BCG solution okay so I like to hear about uh, what innovation is doing in the 40 years journey and for the innovation BCG solution company Thank you very much. Um, so I'm going to stand as well. So good morning, everybody. And uh, I apologize that I have to leave a little bit, um, maybe too much coffee. Uh, so, and my name is Panitan Chunasurikun. And yes, I am his son. 
So you can imagine the enormous pressure I have. If I don't do a good job here, it doesn't end here. Okay, so it's carry on. Um, so today, let us talk about what we can do as an industry to meet to this BCG or this new standard. And before I go to that one, because that is a really, really big concept that we need to look through nowadays, that for the industry point of view and in, in the consumer point of view, it's not just that, it's not, it's not that performance and cost have to balance anymore, but we have to also balance in the green area. So before I go to that, uh, in our innovation group, how we want to tackle BCG or this new regulation standard, um, there's probably some three key things that we, we, we want to make sure that we have all the understanding across our group first. So number one is that we have to start to question we have to start the question, the status quo. Okay, that is the big issue. Uh, we have to start to question it. Why do we still have to have to use this kind of material? Why do we have to start to use, still using this kind of process? And because let's admit it, this kind of BCG movement is a really new standard. And I think every day we deal with enormous change, okay? Not only in the industry, in the consumer side, as well as the regulation. And I think regulation also change every day. So I don't think that a lot of people have a clear understanding what's going on. We have what we call a guideline, but whether it's gonna be like a regulation or going forward in the next 10 or 20 years, that's not really a clear picture on me. So we always say, and then um, Kun Wibun has mentioned it, but in our group, we always say that the regulator must get their act together, okay? Because someday we have this regulation and then another day we have a new, new, new regulation, okay? But that, that is why we have to question whether what we are doing or what we are serving is really in the BCG area. Because sometimes we meet with the subject that we call greenwashing and at the end, the outcome that we expected that it would be good for the environment doesn't come. So that's why we have to question the status quo every time we start to do the project or we start to pursue what we are trying to do in the BCG world. And second one that we are trying to do is we, don't, we have to really remember who we are as an innovation group or as an industrial, okay? Because it all comes down back to basics, okay? As an industrialist, we want to make great product. We want to make a great product. We want to be great in terms of supply chain or value chain. So it comes to boil down on those two areas. And in addition in innovation group, we also want to be excellent in terms of our technology delivery. So everything that we have been doing this past 40 years have to involve with the technology development. So those are the three, three things that we have to remember our core value as an industrialist, as a company that provided to the, to the market or to the consumer. Deliver great products, be great in your supply chain or value chain. And third thing, as our group, we have to be more technical competencies in deliver the solution that is technical, feasible in the market. So that is the second thing that is our approach. And the third thing, we now we talk about carbon credit, but it is my rule, or no, not my rule, but it is some of our understanding in our group that we don't want to focus on carbon credit. We don't focus on carbon credit because sometimes it can be misleading, but we focus on carbon footprint, okay? We want to focus on carbon footprint because that create, give us a platform to work. It gives us a platform to work and to see if we are doing good job, how much better are we contributing to the environment? Carbon credit is some kind of currency, okay? It's, of course, it's gonna be, play a main role in going into the future, but it can be misleading. So let's, we want to focus on common footprint and create a platform where we can measure and see how we're doing in our performance to be better in terms of carbon footprint. 
Okay, so those are the three key things that we want to focus. Like I say, question everything. Second one, know who you are. And third thing, come on credit. You can focus it. I think you will focus in the future. But focus on create a platform where you can measure your performance on carbon footprint. So those are the three key things where we want to tackle in the BCG world. So now, how's the, how's the consumer or a market shifting? Like I mentioned before, now not only that we have to do the performance or cost, but now we have to consider about also uh, the green, green technologies or green involvement on this kind of technology. So once we establish that, we have to come down to see what are our options. So if we want to reduce the carbon footprint in terms of our operation or of our product, what are the options that we can play? Our group is focusing more on the technical development in polymer products and chemistry. Uh, we have from raw material to manufacturing until finished products. Okay, so there are a lot of options that we can play along the supply chain. So what are our options in terms of material? It can be recycled material, it can be bio-based material, it can be renewable material, or we have to involve in terms of compostability. So those are our options if we're going to reduce the carbon emission. How about in terms of operation? I think the key factor that we really have to push forward is in terms of energy. How do we use our energy efficiently and also come in, or coming from renewable source? Because everything that you do in life involving creating or using energy. Like for example, I don't know if it's too cold for everybody sitting in this room. So I don't know if we are using good energy for, for the air condition. So we have to target how we use the energy. Second thing is um, what are the alternative process? What are the alternative process that we can use to produce the products? in order to make great product, great performance, but still reduce cycle time, reduce waste, reduce energy consumption. And third thing, if we go down the chain, we see that what we have been talking about, waste management is also a big issue. So how can we get a good process in terms of waste reduction or waste management of the end of life of the product? So those are the options where we want to focus on the green technology. In terms of performance, of course, uh, sometimes when we see in the market is that we are producing green product, but it's as not durable as the previous product, or the performance is not as good, or it doesn't meet to some criteria of standard. Though those are going to be the challenge for the industrialists if we are going to switch to green material, can we conform or we can create a product that is as durable as before? Because remember that the product that we, the material that we have been using for the past 100 years, we created as so good that it will not go away in a 1 million year. Or it will not be composed, maybe 1 million, million year is too much, but it will not be composed. But now we are switching to green technology that the material cannot be as durable as before. So that is our challenge. How can we create a product that is also durable and good for the environment and performance at the same? But there's also any other performance standard, like so many things that we have to really consider. But that have to put into the picture when we are developing the product. or we serving into the market? or we using into the BCG world? And the third thing is, of course, we talk a lot about the, the cost. Oops. Of course, the cost, there are many criteria that we have to take a look. Okay? It's not only just the cost of the product. It's not only at the cost of the product anymore. I say that if it's feasible in terms of business or not, that is one thing. But how the cost is mitigated throughout the value chain. Because you can create a good product, a good cost, you can create the same cost, but your cost is pushing down either to the consumer, either to the waste treatment, either to other things. So in the end, the whole ecosystem, the cost is increasing. 
how is that going to work in the long term? So we have to not only look that is feasible or not in our business, but how the cost is mitigated into the whole socio economy system. And the third thing is what is the impact cost? For example, we are substituting our product with another material, but are we using the resource that should be using efficiently into another things? But we're putting that into this BCG development, and therefore create a bigger impact in terms of cost for our social and environment. So, you know, it's all this thing. It becomes it's not a really easy answer, but that is what we have to do in order to perform in this BCG world. So, green performance cost. Those are the things that we have to consider throughout the supply chain and throughout the value chain. So in our group, we also do a little bit of a mapping just to see where we can support in terms of our technologies and throughout this value chain. Okay, so I think this is a simple map, and I think everybody will, in every company will have something like this. Okay, you start from the raw material, you have the manufacturing, create a product, consumer use it, create waste. What will be the treatment? Um, uh, or the treatment after you create into energy or you can recycling back into raw material, or you go to the upcycling process and go to the consumer again. So these are some rough map that we want to see if, as an industrialist, where we can plot how we can support in the BCG model. For example, we have some development that we question, why do we have to create wetsuit from synthetic rubber? Why can't it be from natural rubber? Okay, so from that, we have to take a look at what is the technology perspective that we can deliver and substitute the synthetic rubber with the natural rubber. And in turn, we are being using the bio-based material. We are using neo renewable material in substitute to the synthetic material. And from that project, and as I mentioned, that we want to focus on the carbon footprint because carbon footprint will give us the idea on how much better we are doing in terms of performance uh, in the product. Not, not performance, I'm sorry, in terms of environmental impact for the product. And in terms, when we question that, we start to develop and have what it takes to create the technologies, manufacturing process or formulation in order to substitute with the with natural based material to create the vessel. And from that, we see that um, from our evaluation, this can create a bigger impact and 75% less carbon footprint, foot carbon is emission is created from substituting this product. Or it can be in terms of biopolymer, bioplastic, if you may, to create also uh, plastic bags, or mouth theme. But when we, come, when we create plastic bag or mouth theme, as we mentioned that maybe cost is not suitable, we have a higher cost. So what are we going to do in order to create this kind of more benefit if we are going to substitute with bioplastic? We have to take a look down the chain. We have to take a look down the chain. So the impact cost that nobody foresee in terms of, you know, just the price is that there's a cost in terms of decomposability and the cost of getting rid of the plastic. Okay, so we need to work on bioplastic that can conform also in terms of compostability. So see, in terms of chain of the bioplastic, we might have to create a little bit more in terms of how to fully find the value to using the bioplastic. Or if we go down and we have the waste and go to treatment, let's say we want to recycle the product or the waste. And rubber waste is a very big issue because rubber will go into stay for a long time. So we use the rubber or plastic, you know, go to the recycling process and back to see whether we can create the product from this recycling material. Okay, in terms of our group, we can, we can do in terms of footwear or automotive product. Okay, so we can see whether we have this cycle coming back to 
to our group. Or we have a final finished product, for example, like sporting goods or both. Okay. And this kind of waste, how do we do in this routing? We might can create the upcycling process. Okay. And we also mentioned about something like an economy of scale. Sometimes we cannot create a very, very big amount of product and reach that economy of scale. But what if, what if there are specific products that we can use it and generate also a good financial for the company, as well as have a good environmental impact through upcycling? So we create from the product, like the waste for the uh, sporting goods, we can upcycling it with our treatment process, manufacturing process. Mm. Well, actually, this is quite a simple product. Is I think there's a lot of research in MTech so on for the for the floor, the grouting. Uh, but we create this upcycling process and also the design technologies, and now we can apply it into some of the like sporting platform. And actually, this is a quite good program in Japan. Uh, I think some of our uh, visitor from Japan. If you are interested in the Ninja Warrior program, there are some <laughs> products from Innovation Group is using in this. So it's like kind of like an extreme sport. But from there, I believe that once we have this kind of process setting up and people are realizing that this can be some kind of inspiration to them, then the product can be expanded into other, other factors in the sporting area as well. So we're looking at this and try to map in our group. This is the cycle. This is where we can apply bio, circular, and green technology into the development. And where do we map each of these technologies? And how do we complete this whole cycle of circularity? So any, every product will have a different strategy. It will be at best an ideal if we can have the full circle of the product. But there might be a lot of technology that we have to develop. So we start piece by piece. And then when I think in the future, when the technology can be developed, we can reach to the point where we can have all the circularity of the product that we're using. Of course, in the term of manufacturing, energy, defect reductions, all that, those are something that we will also show if you're having the carbon footprint uh, analysis. Okay, so those are the things that we also have to take a look. Okay, using renewable energy or, you know, waste treatment, defect reduction. But there you can also apply. I don't know when we term green technology. I don't think it's just including just uh, using bio or that. But what are the technology that can improve your efficiency and your productivity as well? For example, nowadays we have design and simulation, those kind of platforms used for our product that we can simulate and design that our process throughout the value chain, we can reduce the defect rate down. And in turn, we'll return to have that the company will have a lower carbon emission. Okay, so those are the things that we have to combine together. So we believe that in order to move men into this world, into the BCG world, you have to combine a lot of the knowledge, experience, and also there are a lot of technology that we can apply into this BCG model. So those are the things that we are doing in, in our group in order to cope and tackle into this. Oh, not tackle, but find more collaboration into this uh, BCG model. But of course, I think a lot of our speakers have spoken about the main, main key factor that we face now uh, is finding the collaboration throughout the value chain. Because I think this is, we cannot reach to the net zero without this key factor because everybody have their own specialist. But if we don't collaborate throughout the value chain, it's, it's gonna be a big challenge because some we know this, we can reduce this, but we have to cooperate with the supplier, with end user, with other function in order to create the better circularity of the, of the product and the process. And of course, I hope, 
I, I don't know. This is just my hope. I, I, I know that energy is going to be a very big factor going forward. And I hope that in the future, there can be a technology that's mature enough to provide a, a long-term renewable energy. Uh, for example, hydrogen or other, or natural gas from bioreactor that can provide us more sustainable source of the energy that provided into our world. Because that's going to be a big factor going forward if we are going to reach net zero. Okay, so that's my perspective. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much. Kun Panditan, very detailed on BCG models in Indonesian group. Any question from the floor? We still have five minutes before we end up this section. Any question from the floor? Wow. Yes. Uh, when you were yes. presenting about uh, uh, bio PBS, uh, right, that many coffee shops use in the uh, coffee shop, but uh, I don't see the name of Starbucks in ah. your presentation, and okay. it's like a really big chain like in the world. Are they using like bio PBS okay. as well? Okay, for for Starbucks in Thailand, they use uh, bio plastic straw. Okay. Or uh, in, in Thailand, or in 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 other country like uh, Starbucks India, they use a uh, bio plastic straw and also uh, the uh, bio plastic coated uh, hot cups and also the our uh, PLA cups. Uh, the reason is, or uh, in Thailand, the government uh, have a policy to. Uh, stop using the plastic straw. So our Starbucks follow the government policy. Actually, they, they don't use the bioplastic straw as first. Or they use a paper straw. And then the uh, customer complain because uh, the straw get uh, dissolved in the water. <laughs> and uh, the, the, the paper is uh, uh, dissolved into the coffee. So customer out complain and Starbucks change to bio straw and the complaint is gone. Okay. Or in India they use the bio um, bioplastic cups because of the regulation. So they, they follow the regulation. So in Thailand or they they don't use the bio bioplastic uh, cups, both the hot cup and the cold cups because no regulation. <laughs> So, so, so Starbucks follow every government policies in each country. So, uh, if you go to the uh, San Francisco or the uh, California Starbucks, they also use uh, bioplastic cups, uh, both uh, hot cups and cold cups, because uh, in in the U.S., uh, every state have own uh, policy for the bioplastic. So California use uh, every, use the policy to every single use have to be the compostable material. So in Thailand they use the bioplastic straw, but not the cups. Thank you for question. Thank you very much. Maybe I, I I share a little the comment. Yesterday I joined the uh, Thailand Japan Tech Venture, and I meet one of the company that they produce the a straw. And and they said that in that in that and, and I'm, I'm not sure in Malaysia or Japan or not. They, they claim that maybe by using the by opacity draw it may cause the microplastic problem. So, yeah. So I think I think this is maybe the the new issue that we have to to explore. Yeah. What what about the microplastic it can generate from? So so my, microplastic is uh, the big issue. Uh, especially uh, in in the world right now, not only in Thailand, because uh, the, the the plastic that we use is uh, from the petroleum plastic, so the like a polyolefin or polypropylene, polyethylene. So uh, when they break down, so it's still uh, the polymer 
polymer molecule is uh, the small molecule and small pieces and and the, that pieces is still uh, conventional plastic and the bacteria cannot eat it so it's end up in the environment if um no no one know how uh, how long it's going to be in the environment some say 100 years some say 200 years uh, we we can we still cannot know exactly what uh, what the end of the microplastic in the environment but um for the bioplastic is different because the molecule is from sugar it's a PLA or PBS so bacteria in the environment can eat it up so if it break down the bacteria in the environment like soy or some bioplastic can uh, compose in the water or by marine degradable like a PHA. If we use that um, bioplastic, the, the microplastic that uh, break down from the bioplastic, it will be gone. It will be gone uh, in, 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 in some certain of time. But not 100 years, I can tell you it's not 100 years. We, uh, we do the experiments, put um, uh, the cups of the bioplastic in the soil and test it. So in the Thailand environment with the high humidity and the high temperature, uh, <clears throat> it's end up in uh, bio PBS and end up, end up in, in the soil in one year. And uh, POA is end up in the two years. So. Uh, I think the microplastic uh, <clears throat> for the bioplastic that uh, can be say in the long term, uh, bioplastic cannot cause the microplastic. <laughs> so, yes, and there are questions. <laughs> well, I, I'm interested in this topic because like, um, we talk about microplastic when it's uh, degra uh, degraded in a long term term right but uh, i think professor hathaikan was talking about like microplastic in like bottle drinking bottles or straws while we are drinking it up so it may not be like long term uh, degradation it may be just immediate uh, exposure to this okay i i have that question <laughs> i have the answer of that question as well <laughs> okay um did you know that uh, pla one of the bioplastic can be used for the medical device or medical uh, trans, uh, transplant equipment. Like uh, currently, um, you know, when you go to the operation and you saw it with a uh, needle, so uh, in, uh, in the past, you have to go back to the doctor and take the, the needle out. But um, uh, right now you don't have to go back to the to the doctor. The one that they use for sawing the the wound is bioplastic. It's made of POA, uh, blended with a P P PCL, polycarbolactone. It's a one of the bioplastic. So bio the bacteria in uh, our body can uh, dissolve, or, or we we can say compose, right? <laughs> We can say dissolve in the, our body. So right now there is uh, one of the equipment from bioplastic is the bone imitation. So in in uh, <clears throat> in some country right now they allow to use the bioplastic at the bone transplant. So uh, when you have a broken bone, uh, right now some uh, some hospital use the uh, the, the titanium to uh to make it uh, the bone back to the uh together but uh in the future there is the plastic to make uh bone stick together and can be dissolved you then don't need to take it out so the bacteria in in our body can dissolve the pla the the bone imitation made from pla so if if the microplastic from the packaging from the PLA inside our body, it cannot be uh, be there for a long time like a conventional plastic. So it can be uh, end up uh, by the bacteria in our body. In you can say uh, the bone that uh, used in uh, bone 
<coughs> body mutation uh, dissolve in our body in two years. So we can we can say that. If you're interested in the, uh, the study of the bio, uh, bioplastic can cause my microplastic in the environment in the long term, I can send you the study. Yeah. Thank you very much. Could we both? Uh, I, I, I just want to mention that uh, if the difficult to prove that microplastic is going to come from the uh, plastic bottle because uh, we have one project that we already proved that even you use the glass bottle, you still have microplastic from the water. <laughs> so I, I have um, another example. In the UK, there is a study of the uh, tea bag cause a lot of microplastic. Millions of microplastic every cup of the tea. So now um, the most of the brand owner in the UK, they change the, the tea bag from the uh, PP plastic to to PLA to PLA tea bag. If you go to the uh, UK right now in the supermarket, and you look at the um, uh, tea tea box or tea bag, a lot of them are compostable tea bag. They put it in the in the box and uh, announce it. It's a compostable tea bag. And I, I went to the uh, UK last year and saw a lot of uh, uh, compostable tea bag on, on the shelf of the supermarket, about 80%. 80% is a compostable tea bag on the shelf of the supermarket. And the EU right now um, going to come up with a regulation to ban the uh, conventional plastic tea bag. They need to be the compostable tea bag uh, all over UK, EU uh, in a few years. Thank you very much. Any more questions from the floor? Yes. Dr. Kawahara. Thank you very much. Uh, now I'm understanding the importance of the BCG uh, concept and also your trial and challenging. And uh, I think this is applicable for uh, plastics. Perhaps uh, we can easily uh, apply this BCG concept to the uh, uh, plastics. However, I think it's very difficult to apply this to the uh, rubber industry. We have a program of the uh, so deforestation and also uh, recycling, and many problems exist in the rubber industry. Therefore, uh, if possible, uh, could, you, could you tell us your opinion on the uh, uh, BCG concept in the uh, rubber industry? May I, ask, may I pass this question to Benita? <laughs> who, who, who's the author in the rubber industry? Yes, that's a very good question. And, and, and definitely we saw a lot of challenges in terms of rubber industry. But um, we have been working with, with several projects that we try to create a circularity that means using recycled rubber. Uh, I think I think recycled rubber has been applied for a long time. You know, using from a tire clump, and we re reuse it into tire industry or several other industry. Um, what we are trying to do is that how how can we create the? But that's also a limitation. That's why some other application cannot use those kind of recycled rubber. So what we are trying to do is that we we need to create what our term call it valuable recycle. So from the recycled material, maybe some from like automotive industry or maybe sporting good industry, as you can see. And from there, how can we use our process parameters and also chemicals in order to transform that into a better raw material that we can use in terms of recycle. But so the concept is kind of similar to plastic industry, right? Some plastic industry is using like some also recycle material into that process. So we want to create that kind of concept also in the rubber industry. So some product we can create using maybe 70%, 80%, or some even 100% of recycled rubber into the product. But that we have to categorize in each of the segments. Okay, in some of the... So really that what we can see that the, through the process, we can create what we call the circularity of this rubber process through the recycling, mm. okay? 
the best challenge that the most challenging part in the industry, and I think it's also as well as in the plastic industry, is the collection. Okay, to gather all those uh, recycle wrapper or recycle material, and how do we do the treatment? Okay, but I think the concept is being established, and once it can. Once it can be deployed in the wider range, then we can see and create more the circularity of the wrapper. Okay, um, and not only that, I think upcycling is also another prospect that we want to see that we're going to create more into the rubber industry, because from tire from those those going to be a big challenge to to deal with the tire waste. But from there, how can we create a upcycling, such as the example that we see in PET? That from uh, pet material we can create the clothing. We also want to create that kind of concept. How can we get involved with that material to other upcycling product? Maybe in construction area, maybe in terms of uh, you know other sporting goods area, or even go back into their original product. Okay, mm -hmm. so those are the things that we want to create in terms of this this uh, BCG model for the rubber industry. Mm. I don't know if that answered the question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. I understand this, your, your answer. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think usually the property of the rubber is uh, reduced uh, by recycling. Therefore, uh, I'm, I, I think at the first, uh, uh, first time we must focus on this point, and then we have to figure out how to recycle the rubber, uh, recy uh, rubber material. Yes, and that is where we come, can have the design and simulation program that come to play. I understand. Because when we have those kind of recycled material, then we have to collect the data on how much the property is changed. And then you have to test the durability of the material or the product. And that's why if we want to create a platform that we can do this thing faster, the most important thing is how do we enhance our simulation data collection program. Because that's going to be important. And also my question is well, probably now that we are going better, getting better better in terms of AI technology, how can AI technology come to help us in terms of simulation and generating all this usable data that we can create a more better uh, material or better product analysis to use more recycled material? Uh, so when we want to find if it's feasible to use, again, those kind of recycled material, like you said, the property drop, but we would be able to use in a longer durable time. Okay, so if we can achieve that and nothing has been changed, then we think that we can achieve those kind of products to use in the recycle method. I agree with you. Very interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, everybody have any questions? Or not, we close this section. I would like to thank you, Kun Vipun Pung Pasir. Okay, Dr. Thaikan Manat Piya, Kun Tawnit Panya Suwat Nakap, and Kun Bentan Chunhas. Would you please give the big hands to all these big speakers? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh. Okay, Kapkun Ka, thank you very much for all the very uh, interesting discussion with the panelists. Uh, at this moment, may I uh, invite Ajahn Bancha to please give some token of appreciation to our panelists. Please. Okay, so. Um, So maybe uh, we, we can uh, start from uh, Professor Hathaykan. Thank you very much. I'll invite Dr. Sawanit. Thank you very much. Uh, 
อัพเน็กซ์มีไงอินไวท์คุณวีพูขอบคุณมากคุณวีพูลอัลเวย์วันประเด็นทานครับค่ะ last but not least ปรนิทาน thank you very much ต่อขอบคุณค่ะค่ะไปร่วมร่วมกัน And may I invite uh, Dr. Pailo นะคะ to brief uh, present token of appreciation to uh, our moderator นะคะจันบัญชานะคะขอบพระคุณมากค่ะขอบคุณค่ะขอบคุณค่ะ Thank you very much ไอ้รูปลงกันครับผมทำไปรอยู่ด้วยขอบคุณค่ะขอบคุณทุกท่านค่ะ